Hi, I'm Brett Jennings, and for the last 12 years, I've traveled the country to meet, mentor, and mastermind with some of the brightest and best minds both inside and outside of real estate. I've taken those ideas, brought them back to our team of experts, and sold hundreds of homes per year all across Silicon Valley, and this is how we do it. Brett Jennings with Real Estate Experts here on our Experts on Fire series. Catching up with Jade Ogundi here uh, at Real Estate Experts and talking to him a little bit about his remarkable success that he's been be able to create as an agent and with just three years in the business, uh, actually less than three years in the business, is on track now uh, for over a million dollars in GCI and has uh, done something that we advocate, and that is doubling your business year over year. So Jade, great to have you and thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Hey, Brett, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So um, tell us a little bit about, you know, I'm sure people are listening saying, wow, like to create that kind of success in such a short time frame, like, you know, how does he do it? What, what, what kind of background do you come from in, in, in to create that kind of success? So um, tell us a little bit about how you got into real estate and, and what, what prompted you to think about real estate as a career? So my uncle actually has been in the business for about 30 years. Um, he, let's see, he's done it. He's been in the Bay Area for, for the entire time. Uh, when I, I went to Santa Clara and interned with him, actually, in my senior year. Hmm. Um, so uh, I started learning a little bit about the business at that point. I was just doing you know, a lot of cold calling and stuff like that for him at that point. You know, and just following up with his leads and just some basic assistant type stuff for him. And um, after I finished in, in, in school, I went and played soccer for a long time. Um, and when I came back, uh, he was still in the business. And I ended up just uh, calling him and asking him some more about it. And at that point, it was obviously more, it was more serious conversations. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and after I talked to him, it just seemed like it'd be a good fit for me because it's something where you kind of, in a sense, control your success. Um, and I liked that idea. So mm-hmm. at that point, I got my license and uh, I got started. That's awesome. That's awesome. So a couple of things I want to unpack there, because I think uh, that, you know, there's a saying one of my mentors uses that success leaves clues. And uh, the fact that, you know, in college, it looks like you had someone who was either somewhat of a mentor or a role model for you, at least in real estate. You hadn't yet decided you wanted to be in real estate, but it sounds like your uncle was a pretty successful agent. Yeah. I mean, he was doing well. He was definitely doing well. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't know too much about real estate at that time. So I kind of, it was kind of yeah. just, I was getting credits in school and it made sense. And it was, you know, I liked what he was doing. And so, yeah, it, it yeah. seemed like well. And he, uh, he made a career out of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, one of the other things that he had you do that probably, you know, not a lot of other people who intern in, in real estate do is actually getting on the phones. Right. And it sounds like he, got, he had you getting on the phone and making calls. Yeah. So, you know, I think therein lies one another a clue is that you came into real estate uh, with with eyes wide open, knowing that if you were going to be successful, your uncle was successful. He was doing something and that's prospecting. And right. I like to say, you know, um, y- y- you can't get away from it. Real estate's a contact sport. Right. And so sure. if you want to make do well and make good money in real estate, you're going to be on the phone talking to people at least a couple hours a day. Tell us a little bit about what kind of stuff were you doing with calling? Were you just just calling his past clients? Were you calling it in neighborhoods? And and how did that go? So it was a long time ago. Um, this mm-hmm. was, been, uh, I mean, we're talking almost, almost, yeah, like 15, 16 years ago. No, like 12 years ago. Uh, but uh, we were, I think it was just, it may have been just calling in his, in his farm um, and also following up with leads is what I was doing. Uh, and also just like looking stuff up on the MLS, uh, from what I remember, it was just like a lot of the busy work that I, that I look at as busy work now is what I was doing for him. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But, uh, so that's, that, that was, sounds like it was a good, um, experience for you that you, that certainly brought you back after, uh, you finished school. So there was, it sounds like a pretty good gap between the time when you graduated from college before you actually came into real estate. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned you played soccer. Tell us a little more, more about that. Were, were you playing competitively or? Yeah, so I played professionally in Denmark. I played okay. at Santa Clara first, and then um, I ended up going to Denmark to play. And I lived in Denmark for nine years. Wow. Uh, so I was gone, it was a, a 10 year gap before I ended up coming back to the Bay Area. 
Um, so when I got back to the Bay Area, I didn't really know much about it because I'm from Philadelphia originally. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never really knew the area that well outside of Santa Clara's campus and, you know, just the surrounding areas. Um, so when I came back, everything felt like it was brand new. Um, so then I, uh, you know, met with him and talked to him about it. And then I just tried it. You know, I just kind of jumped right in. Got it. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is, uh, you know, not obviously many people have that experience, right? Being a professional athlete. But I, I think there's probably something there that played into your success. Um, you know, the skills of soccer don't necessarily translate to real estate, but I right. bet there's some foundational um, principles and things that that prepared you well for what, you know, your early career in real estate and doing what it takes to be successful. Like if you look back on your experience, what what do you see as those things that maybe from soccer that be, being a professional athlete that translated uh, to real estate? Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, for me, it's very similar. Both are very similar. Um, I think with, with soccer or with any professional sport, it, it's a lot of discipline, right? So it takes a lot of discipline to be able to sustain any level, any high level in anything that you're doing. Um, so with real estate, it's the same thing, right? If you don't have the discipline to wake up every day and work, you know, you'll never be successful. Um, and with soccer, it's the same thing, right? Because it's every day. Um, the other thing that I think is very similar is with real estate, it's never, you can always do more, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're playing professional sports, there's always more that you can improve on, right? So you're never really, you never get to the point where you just, you're, you know, you're good at everything. Um, I think even the best players in the world now, you know, you look at Cristiano Ronaldo, these guys are still training nonstop, right? Because there's still something they can improve on. And with real estate, it's the same thing, right? There's always something you can do. There's more work to be done. Uh, and that's something that I like because, you know, never bored, you know, there's always more to do, right? Yeah. Uh, and you get to the point where there's just never enough time in the day. Yeah. No, that's that's interesting. The training never ends. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's something here that we focus on uh, real estate experts is, you know, if you want to get paid like a pro, you got to train like a pro. Sure. Uh, and every week. Right. We're, we're constantly honing our craft, or whether it's people showing up for the role play call, if they're if they're newer and getting those scripts and dialogues down or if they're more experienced and it's about how to you know de deploy the next tactic that you're going to use to get more listings. Mm -hmm. um, that training never ends. Well, that's certainly paid off, um, you know, for, for those people who are listening, just to let you know. So as we understand it, right, you did just started at the end of 2018, uh -huh. did just a few deals. Uh -huh. And then your first full, full year in 2019, how many deals do you think you did? So it was 11 or 12. I think it may have been 12, maybe one closed early okay. in 2019. Um, I think that's what it ended up being. Got it. And then you, you, you again, put that focus and that discipline uh, of just constantly working uh being disciplined and, and, and trying to get better and then last year in 2020 how many how many deals do you think you so i think 18 to 20 last year is, is yeah. what it was uh, yeah so, and it, it felt like for me i should have I, I thought i would do more last year but with mm -hmm. covid i was actually in a spot where things just slowed down for me because the things that i was doing to pick up leads i couldn't do um so that was a struggle for me because you know, I just wasn't generating, you know, as many leads as I thought I would have. Yeah. And so now for 2021, <clears throat> you're having a fantastic year, which is awesome to see. So you, you, you did 11 deals in 2019, 20 deals in 2020, you effectively doubled. Uh -huh. And then here you are in 2021, looking like you're going to double again and hit 40 transactions. Uh -huh. um, you mentioned that in 2020, you had some challenges with lead generation because some of the things that you were doing weren't working. What happened in 2020 and then what's different in 2021? How did you retool and position yourself for, for that additional growth? Well, a good question. I think a few things have happened. Um, but part of it is just the, the constant work that I've been doing in these first years is now coming to fruition, right? So I've done, you know, talked to so many people and, and made so many calls. And so some of that business that, you know, hadn't come to me is now coming to me. Um, and I've also been searching for ways, you know, to, to generate leads that I wasn't able to do before. So I've, I've, you know, I spoke with you, obviously, I think you and I talked a number of times um, and that was one of the things for me. And I've always tried to do this. It's just trying to constantly improve. So I felt like I was stuck where I was before and not having leads. So I was just looking for opportunities. Um, so that's how I ended up, you know, coming to you. And, um, and that for me, you know, like I said, well, I think next year is where I'll really see an explosion um, because everything that I'm doing now, it's, it's in a system. Uh, yeah. So 
but yeah, I just, uh, I kept just plugging away, doing what I've been doing, kept calling. Um, I tried to double down the calling, um, started to do open houses once we've gotten them again, uh, just everything. And that's what I've always done. I've always tried to do a little bit of everything and it, it kind of always works. Uh, that, so that, I, that, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. There, yeah. There's another, another thing I want to call out there uh, is that you said you've always done a little bit of everything because yeah. everything works. Uh -huh. There's a saying in marketing and it says, nothing works. I'm sorry, everything works and nothing doesn't. Right. Meaning like if you, if you test stuff that other people have done successfully, it probably will work. You will get some results, but if you don't do any of it, <laughs> you right. don't get any results. So, so that's been awesome. But you're, what you, what you, I think what you also said was up until now, right. You, you've kind of been doing a lot of different things, yeah. winging it to a certain degree because you didn't really have good systems and things right. around it. Right. And so um, I'm excited for you because here you are in 2021, you've got, now you've got the lead generation, uh -huh. right? That, that you need to support not only yourself, but now you're starting to grow a team. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and now that you have those systems in place, uh, what do you think is possible for you in 2022? Um, I, the goal is, is 60. Um, mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think when I first talked to you, the goal was, pro was probably 50. Uh, but with where I am now, uh, I should definitely be doing more than 50. So I'll definitely have a goal of 60 or more, uh, depending on what we can do with building a team. If we build a team, I think it could be even more. Um, yep. but I know for myself, I'd like to be able to do at least 60 next year. Yeah, I, I think you're definitely on track for it, man. So a um, couple of quick takeaways just to, to, to put a bow on this for the people who are watching. Uh, you know, having that win winner's mindset of constantly improving. Yeah. Is, is one of the things it seems like created that foundational growth for you. Uh, and then, and, and getting after it. Uh, and, and to your point, like, it's interesting. I remember meeting you and I think it was probably right around the time you were getting started. We went to, we met at a training event uh -huh. uh, where we, we was put, put on, it was a top agent panel where, where it was going to be a top agent who was talking about those things. So you were already at that time, early in your career, seeking out like, different agents who had already been crushing it to find out what you can learn. And that, that I remember you distinctly, because I think we sat next to each other and I was like, that guy, he's going to go far. <laughs> um, and so I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to circle back. And now we get to, uh, to, I can have some part in your success sure. is, uh, is, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're, you're talking about is like, you know, having that winner's mindset, a commitment to, always be learning, always be improving, uh -huh. uh, focusing on your lead generation and then getting systems in place. So um, any other advice that you give to someone who's newer in the business, maybe that's it's just not happening for them yet? Uh, and before we sign off? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I first started, I didn't do my first deal for four months. Um, mm. That was me working literally from, and anyone at, when I was at Interro at the time, anyone at Interro would, will tell you, I would work from seven o'clock I would do role play at seven o'clock in the morning, almost every morning during the week. And then I wouldn't leave until probably seven o'clock in the evening. So I would be calling, I would do cold calling until seven o'clock in the evening. So I didn't, and, and doing that, I still didn't get a deal done for four months. Wow. Um, so it was very difficult. Um, and part of it was, I was so new. I was new to real estate. I was new to the area. So I didn't really know the area. Um, and for people ask me when I started what I do, I literally got on Mojo and Brett, you know, I know Mojo well. I, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, used I've used it so much, um, but I, I literally went on Mojo and just started circling areas and I would just call. Um, and, you know, it, 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 I didn't get, I just, I think the only thing I got from it really at the beginning was just learning to talk to people and being comfortable talking to people. And then from that, you know, I started doing open houses and everything was just new. So it took time. And then finally I got that deal, that one deal done and things started to move, but you really just have to be disciplined and and kind of trust the process that you know and listen to to, the, to what people say about numbers and just making sure you're hitting numbers because if you do, eventually things will happen for you. Success um, will come. You've, you've got to be patient and uh, and be willing to just put in that work because it's one of those businesses where once it gets going, it keeps going if you're willing to keep doing the work. Yeah, and you're doing it, brother. Um, well, it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to uh, connect with you today. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, for those people who are watching or listening, if you are on a path to increase your business, 
reach out to us, check us out on the blog here. Um, you can register for our monthly mastermind, or if you want to do some one-on-one, -on -one, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one strategy session to unpack the opportunities in your business and see where those things meet, might, might be opportunities that you're missing. And that is whether we're working together or not. So I, I my personal passion is coaching other agents to, to find greater levels of success in real estate. And Jade, thank you for, uh, for making that opportunity possible for me. Um, but uh, with that, I'll say until we all talk again, this is Jade and Brett saying, don't just be an agent, be the expert. Have a good one.